everybody and welcome back to the girly girl bookworm so today i have a weekly wrap up for you because i actually read some books and i'm actually not busy so i can film you a video um <clears throat> sorry i have like a frog in my throat all of a sudden i have four books to wrap you up on since um i got home from vacation i got home from vacation last monday so basically it's almost a straight week because the next book I had read was from Tuesday to Tuesday, so exactly a week. So I have four books to share with you, plus the book that I am currently reading. So I'm going to start off with the book I'm currently reading, and that is The Lady of the Rivers by Philippa Gregory. One of my new things that I'm trying to do in my TBR shelf kind of thing is read an old book, read a new book, read an old book, read a new book. So like that way I'm not leaving any books behind on my shelf for a really long time. <clears throat> And I felt like it was finally time to pick this up. This has been on my shelf for about two years because I bought it when I first discovered the books a million down in Disney, which was, I think, two years ago. So time to finally read this, especially when I just bought another book from the series and I had already owned another book. It was time to finally pick this up. I'm halfway through. Yeah, I'm using a candy wrapper. Don't judge me. Um... Yeah, about halfway through. So I'm hoping to finish this today, if not tomorrow. Um, so the first book that I read once I got back from vacation and I finished The Rumors is um, A Beautiful Wedding by Jamie McGuire. This is the novella that is supposed to come after Walking Disaster, I guess. But it's hard because Beautiful Disaster and Walking Disaster are like companion novels in the sense that I think Beautiful, not Beautiful, Beautiful Disaster is told in the girl perspective I'm forgetting her name all of a sudden Abby and um walking disaster is told in Travis's point of view of the same exact story and I'm not going to get into too much about what this is about since it is a novella and it does follow after but it gives you a sneak peek of a scene that we kind of get to miss we kind of miss out on um when you're reading um beautiful disaster at least I obviously haven't read um walking disaster but um yeah, I gave this one four stars, I believe, or even just three, just because it's just one of those middle novellas that just gets you into a scene really quickly and gets you out of the scene really quickly. So I thought it was enjoyable, and I'm glad that I finally got to see what I missed from the book. And then I read Where'd You Go, Bernadette by Mara Semple, and this book was kind of disappointing. I gave it three stars. It's about this family, and it's kind of told in a really interesting perspective. Part of it is told by the 15-year-old daughter. Um, when she graduates um, middle school, one of her parents had said, like, from the beginning, like, if you graduate middle school with all A's, we will give you whatever you want. So, of course, she asks for a trip to go to Antarctica. And Bernadette is kind of trying to plan this trip, and... She kind of has, it's hard, she has this anxiety about going out in public and different things like that. So planning this trip has kind of set her off the deep end, really. So it kind of alternates perspective from Bernadette to her daughter to just seeing different emails going back and forth to having people talk about Bernadette. There's an entire section of just people explaining Bernadette from her past. And why she is probably the way that she is now. Um, even though it says that she disappears, that does not happen until probably the very end. So don't get your hopes up on the disappearance part. That is not really the main focus. I guess it's just about finding yourself um, versus finding your physical self, if that makes any sense. Um, I enjoyed it. I just felt like... It wasn't what I was expecting. Like, I was the one who was expecting the mystery and the finding, and that just wasn't what we got. And um, so that part where they were explaining who she was, that was very dull. That was very drawn out, and I did not like that part at all. The ending, once it happened, was, like, it was cool while it was happening because part of it does take place in Antarctica, which is pretty neat. Um, and it was just... All of a sudden, it was over, and it didn't even have an epilogue, which I would have loved because part of it ends with, like, all this stuff happens, and 
things just didn't get solved the way I expected, slash one of the character doesn't know things as she's explaining something, so then I'm like, what really happened in the end? I don't know. I wish somebody has read this book so I could actually talk about it. That's, like, one of those things, because it was one of those things that you don't want to spoil, but, like, you want somebody that's read it so that way you can just, like, delve into it and explain it. But, um, yeah, so I gave it three stars. It was interesting. Um, I would recommend it if you went into it with the right mindset. Now, <laughs> I am on the weird end of this book, this next book, and I finally, finally finished The Night Film by Marisha Pessel. The last time I picked this book up was in December. I was going to read it um, when I went to Disney, and when I was on the airplane, I read about 40 pages, and then I just did not really want to read this while I was on vacation. And then months went by and I just never had a chance to pick it up because it's like a 600 page book. It's very dense reading that it just was not going to get read during the school year while I was teaching and it just wasn't going to happen. So I finally picked it up and I gave it three stars. I did not love it. Um, for a majority of the book I kept saying to Patrick, that I was going, this book was going to be one of those books that I didn't even think I'd be able to rate. I had no feeling on it whatsoever. It was just going through the pages and I was like, I don't even know how I feel about this. I don't know if I like this. I don't know if I don't like this. And then it, the book took t a certain turn that I didn't exactly like. I wasn't expecting it. Um, it makes references to the occult and that is not what I was expecting out of this book at all. Um, and then towards the end when I was finally, okay, I think I might know what to rate this. There's these, this scene that's like a whole section long and I was like, I'm not going to make it through this book. I was like, I was like, you know, there's only like a hundred pages left. I was like, I'm not going to be able to make it through. And I don't know. And like the ending, it just was like, what? <laughs> um, it's one of those books that there, it's just so hard to explain why I did or did not like it. Um, part of it was, it, if you don't know what it's about, this girl, Ashley, she is found dead and it is assumed that she has committed suicide. And this man who basically is an investigative reporter who is kind of like out, he's not allowed to be on the job anymore because he spread some false information. He tries to solve this case because it is the person that he spread false information out about was this character's father. And that father is a movie, like, director. And a lot of the times, like, they'll explain characters or explain this movie. And I'm like, movies don't exist in real life. I don't care. Um, so it was just kind of dull. I don't know. I'm very, very torn about this book and what happened and my experience reading it. Um, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I don't know. Um, and then the last book I have to talk to you about is um, Onyx. Right? Yeah. So this is the bind up um, of Obsidian and Onyx by Jennifer L. Armentrout. And I read Obsidian this time last year. I actually read Obsidian the day I met Patrick. I read the entire book in one sitting because I was so nervous about meeting him. Um, so I felt like it was just only fitting to read the sequel basically in that same month that I met him last year. And I gave um, Onyx four stars. I, um, on Goodreads, you're going to notice that I just rated Onyx by itself in the other edition because I read Obsidian in a, um, ebook version. So basically I only bought this book so I could have the physical copy of both. Um, but I did like Obsidian. It does, not Obsidian, Onyx. It does have those typical, like, YA cliches that I usually don't like, but it was still really fun and entertaining. I read it all in one sitting. I feel like these books, even though I've only read the first two, they are just such easy reads that you can just fly through without any effort whatsoever. 
Um, I did not read the extra stuff in the back. I really don't care about those extra little excerpts. Um, but I did enjoy Onyx and I gave it four stars. Um, I will hopefully be getting consequences, um, the Lux consequences before next year. So hopefully it won't be another year before I pick up the rest of the series. I need to actually go buy consequences. That's my issue. Um, or I would have picked it up last night to read that. Um, so yeah, I'm slowly enjoying the series and I forgot to include the series in my unfinished series wrap up because I forgot that about it because of the fact that Obsidian is in, um, ebook. So that's why I didn't remember that one, but yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this 